Hey everybody, welcome to Tarmigan Butts. Welcome back, you've been here before. I'm Steve, and this is the Tarmigan Butts home office. I'm gonna call this video Reputation versus Reality, and it has to, it's just meant to lay out some context and some history for the mining industry as a whole, to give people some understanding of the way the industry operates now versus the way that it used to operate. Because the, the running narrative in the United States today is that mining is a, a dangerous industry to work in. And if a mine shows up in the next town over, they're just going to wreck everything. And that just statistically is not the truth. That narrative is built on, it, it is built on historical fact, but really, really old historical fact at this point. Um, you're talking about events that have happened maybe 50 years ago, maybe 75 years ago, maybe 100 years ago, that we are still dealing with the effects of, say, the pollution of mines from 100 years ago today. But it doesn't mean that the mine that started up 20 years ago or 15 years ago or is going to start up 10 years from now in your neighborhood uh, is going to just, you know, wreck the wetlands below it. So I'll give you a, a little bit of idea how things used to work and then a little bit of an idea how things work closer to present. And I decided to uh, take a look at the Quincy mine because it's it's located near where I grew up in Hancock, Michigan. So in 1843, there was a, a mineral boom or a mining boom that, that started in the Upper Peninsula in, we call it the Copper Country. And it was uh, started due to, due to some publicity from a dude named uh, Douglas Houghton. And he brought publicity to the fact that there was mineralization in the copper country, okay? So the boom starts 1843. Uh, in 1846, the exploration began on what would later become the Quincy Mine. They made their discovery and had begun production by 1848. So think about that timeline. They start prospecting in 1846, and they are producing by 1848. If you just think about it realistically, that's not a lot of time to plan things like construction of the mine, number one, but also uh, to make considerations for the environment around the mine. Probably pretty non-existent. We're going to pull the rocks out. We're going to pile the rocks up over here. And I, I, can't even, I can't even remember how they milled the copper. I know it was super, super high-grade ore, but um, I'll have to take a look into that later. So you're talking about two years from prospecting, from the start of prospecting to an operating mine. And that would have included the camp and everything. I mean, that's, that's wild. Now travel more than 100 years into the future from 1846, and we go to 1968. So in 1968, near Kotzebue, Alaska, uh, the United States Geological Service reported mineralization of zinc, lead, and nickel, or zinc, lead, and silver, sorry. In 1975, uh, some small, uh, probably wildcat types, uh, if you make a comparison to the oil industry, probably like wildcat types, little independent cats, started staking their first claims and doing exploration in 75. In 1980, a bigger player came in, Kaminko, which I think later became Tech Kaminko, drilled their first nine holes in 1980. It took until 1989 to get that mine up and operational. And that was 40 years ago. Um, between 40 years ago and now, uh, the, the environmental regulations have all strengthened. MSHA regulations have all strengthened. Um, state and local regulations have all strengthened. So it's likely that if the Red Dog Mine, if a similar mine to the Red Dog Mine was identified or a similar deposit was identified anywhere in the United States, it would probably take twice as long to start now. And that's just in the last 40 years. So these are not fly-by-night operations in a little bit more historical context. Um, I went back as far as the data would take me. Uh, the earliest year that they have reported deaths for uh, mining in the United States 
was 1931, and that was 225 deaths, and there were about 159,000 minors that year. That would give you about a 1 in 706 chance of dying if you were a minor. It's not very good odds. Um, in 2020, um, there were, I think, 200 and, was it 235,000 minors and 24 total deaths. That gives you about a 1 in 9,600 chance of dying. Now, I do understand that at least if my memory serves correct, that your chance of death in mining is higher than in a lot of other industries. But you have to remember that, you know, there is risk when you do anything. And, you know, look at the comparison over the last hundred or over the last 90 years. And it's, it's pretty obvious that mining as an industry has made a whole bunch of improvements when it comes to safety. Um, and that trend continues, not just in deaths, but if you were to look at um, non-fatal injuries, the, the rate and severity of injuries has come down over time. It hasn't, uh, it's come down uh, pretty wildly, just like the, the number of fatalities has. I just wanted to provide a counter to the narrative that mining is an awful, horrible place to work in due to um, people relying on the information that they got from their, from their great grandparents. Um, my great, what was it? My great, great, I think it'd be my great, great grandfather on my dad's side died in a copper mine. I actually don't remember, but because of that, um, you know, when I was growing up, we never heard a good story about mining. We, we were relying on information from, you know, like a hundred years ago. Um, and I just want you to watch for, uh, those narratives when a discovery is made near your town, or if you're, you know, like a friend or family member calls you and, you know, they talk about the mine that might be moving in down the road. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's why I call myself a conservationist and not an environmentalist. Um, and to me, the difference is an environmentalist doesn't think it's appropriate to ever go after any natural resource ever, whereas a conservationist can think about it critically and determine, you know, uh, maybe, you know, this resource over here is worth going after. It's, it's worth the small amount of risk and the engineering is good versus, you know, there might be one on the other side of the state that maybe it's not worth the risk right now. And, and Alaska is facing some of those challenges where people have to make some really hard choices about whether or not some of the mines that are being proposed are worth that risk. And uh, I did talk about that a little bit in my Rotary Club talk in January, and I'll be talking about that again in the future. I've actually got to rewatch that video so I can remember what the hell it was I was talking about. Um, and unfortunately, the Q&A didn't get filmed, and that Q&A was awesome. Uh, it went on for like 45 minutes, and people asked some really, really good questions. Um, yeah, but that's what I've got. Uh, don't let the old narrative uh, drive your opinion without taking a look at newer data to figure out what's going on. Um, I'll be doing some more videos on this. Just wanted to give a quick overview. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Hit the like button. Pardon. Hit the like button and I'll see you later. See you.